For the 2020 contribution project, I decided to research the contributions of Janie Porter Barrett. Janie was an African-American woman who dedicated her life to serving the social welfare system. Before this project, I didn't know who Janie was, but now I know her contributions have shaped the social work profession, and now you will too. Janie Porter Barrett was born on August 9, 1865, in Athens, Georgia. She was born to a former slave, Julia Porter, and her father is unknown, but due to her light complexion, her father was believed to be Caucasian. Her mother worked as a housekeeper for the Skinner family. The Skinner family treated Janie the same as their own children by providing her education and offered to legally adopt her so she could attend school in the North where she could live as a white person, but her mother refused. Janie's mother chose to send her to the Hampton Institute in Hampton, Virginia. Hampton Institute was an African-American college where Janie lived with other African-Americans for the first time in her life. Hampton Institute focused on teaching women more vocational roles like housekeeping and careers as wives. While at Hampton, Janie was introduced into the world of social services. Janie read a novel while at school that was about privileged and advantaged women who dedicated their lives to social services. She felt such a connection to this novel that she began volunteering for community projects that aimed at helping others. Through her love of helping others, Janie was trained as an elementary teacher, which is what became her first career. Janie graduated from Hampton Institute in 1885. After graduating, Janie began working as a teacher at a school in rural Georgia. Although she enjoyed teaching at this school, there were challenges that proved to be difficult for her. She received an offer to teach night classes at Hampton Institute and she could not resist it. She worked as a teacher for five years. In, 19, in 1889, Janie married another Hampton graduate, Harris Barrett, who was the school's cashier and bookkeeper and later became an influential entrepreneur in town. The couple went on to have four children. While Janie had the opportunity to stay at home and live a comfortable life, she decided that she had a greater purpose to serve. She decided to dedicate her life to the social service work. Her first big social service project was forming the Locust Street Social Settlement in 1890. The Locust Street Settlement was, the model after the, was modeled after the Hull House, which provided housing for immigrant individuals. But the Locust Street Settlement was unique as it was the first that focused on African American individuals. The work of the Locust Street Settlement began to take shape as a clubhouse facility was added in 1902. After the clubhouse was created, activities for individuals began to arise like clubs for men and women, lectures, and general social work. The Locust Street Settlement was instrumental in starting libraries and playgrounds. Even though the settlement provided many activities for African American individuals, there was a greater lesson that Janie wanted them to take away. Janie wanted to teach them how to care for themselves by teaching them how to be self-efficient. She showed them how to take care of a home, how to raise their own food, how to care for their children, and overall, how to improve the social life of the community. Through Janie's work with the Locust Street Settlement, she established relationship with other social service workers like Jane Adams, who recognized Janie's work at the Hull House. In 1908, Janie became founder of the Virginia State Federations of Colored Women's Club. In 1910, she began working with white women's organizations and specifically with Mary Cook Branch Mudford. With the help of other organizations and Mudford, Janie was able to organize the Federation to purchase a piece of farmland in order to create a rehabilitation center for African American girls who are in trouble with law. Before she opened the Rehabilitation Center, Janie established a standard of care for dependent black children who have previously been treated poor. At the Locust Street Settlement, Janie created a growth-promoting atmosphere for young black girls. She used child welfare and educational principles from the Child Welfare League. This program became a model for treatment services and social work like providing safe housing, medical care, and job training for unmarried black women and their children. In 1915, Janie became the superintendent of the Virginia Industrial School for Colored Girls. The aim of this new school was to help girls develop a Christian character through the use of rewards instead of punishments, in order to emphasize that the school was more of a home and not a prison. 
The girls who were sent to the school were usually delinquent or dependent colored girls who were sentenced to prison then paroled to the school. At the time, there were no foster homes for colored girls in need of care, and jail was the only alternative. Before 1920, Virginia state legislator provided funds for similar institutions that were for Caucasian boys and girls, but did not extend the funds for African American children. Luckily for Janie, she was able to establish connections with white organizations that allowed her to gain their support and raise money from private sources to fund the programs at her school. Janie would also release annual reports about the school's progress, and at the beginning, she would use these reports to ask for items she needed, like blackboards and books. By the fourth annual report, Janie emphasized how well the school is coming along. The school now has made significant improvements through the development of roads, buildings, and a curriculum for girls. Janie retired from the school in 1940. Janie's work with the correctional education of colored girls provided more than just rehabilitation. She was able to help these girls improve their lives by giving them the resources they never had before. She was able to use an use her earned influence to advocate for black voting rights and their involvement in the government years before the civil rights movement. In 1929, Janie received the William E. Harmon Award for Distinguished Achievement Among Negroes. A year later, she was invited to participate in the White House Conference on Child Health and Protection. Janie Porter Barrett died on August 27, 1948. Two years after her death, the General Assembly renamed the school that she had founded to the Janie Porter Barrett School for Girls. I am so happy I had the opportunity to research about Janie's life because it is shocking that someone could dedicate their whole life to serving others and not get the recognition they deserve just because they're a minority. And these are my references.